Hello viewers. In the last three lessons in on linear programming, we have introduced you to the concept of linear programming, how to formulate linear programming problem and how to solve it graphically using corner point method. We have covered several types of problems, manufacturing problems, diet problems and of course the transportation problem. In today's lesson, we are going to consider two special situations. What are they going to be? Why don't we get started with them and then learn from our experience. Our first question is from NCRT textbook and it is on page 519. Get started with it. It's just the very first question and here's its statement. The problem states that Reshma wishes to mix two types of food P and Q in such a way that the vitamin content of the mixture contain at least 8 units of vitamin A and 11 units of vitamin B. Food P costs rupees 60 per kg, food Q costs rupees 80 per kg. Food P contains 3 units per kg of vitamin A and 5 units per kg of vitamin B. While food Q contains 4 units per kg of vitamin A and 2 units per kg of vitamin B. You have to find the minimum cost of the mixture. So to begin with the problem is very straightforward. It's a diet problem. And here we are looking at two types of foods P and Q. So our decision variables will be related to how much I am going to use of food P and food Q respectively. What is also given is that we need to minimize the cost. So the cost of food P per kg is known and of Q per kg is also known. So that's also very clearly stated. At the same time, the constraints that we are going to build up will be based on the idea that the new mixture must contain 8 units of vitamin A and 11 units of vitamin B. What also is given to us is that the food P contains 3 units of vitamin A whereas 4 units per kg of vitamin A comes from the food Q. So the vitamin A how much I need and how much is available is what is going to link up the facts. At the same time we are also looking at minimal requirement for vitamin B. I need at least 11 units of vitamin B and what we have is 5 units per kg of vitamin B comes from food P whereas 2 units per kg of vitamin B gets from food Q. If I start putting these together starting with of course that we are assuming that X kg of food P, Y kg of food Q are mixed and then the minimize the cost the function which I am focusing on objective function will be Z equal to 60x plus 80y because 60 rupees per kg is the cost of food P and 80 rupees per kg is the cost of food Q. What are the constraints? I am looking at 3x plus 4y must be greater than or equal to 8. At least 8 units of vitamin A are needed. Similarly, at least 11. So at least means at least minimum I need 8. I can have more than that amount coming in. X and Y both are non-negative. So X is greater than or equal to 0. Y is greater than or equal to 0. So this is our linear programming problem that we need to solve. You would possibly wonder there is nothing special about this problem so far. So let's just wait and watch what happens. In this case, as I start plotting the graph, we are looking at two linear constraints, 3x plus 4y greater than or equal to 8 and 5x plus 2y greater than or equal to 11. When you plot the straight lines and decide to shade the feasible region, you can take origin to be your testing point and in both the cases, origin does not satisfy the linear inequalities and therefore the shading will be away from the origin 
also restricting the solution to the first quadrant, we get our feasible region as an unbounded region. In this case, the corner points, there are three corner points A, B and C, they can be read from the graph or solve them the two equations simultaneously and get very, very accurate points. In this case, I have A to be 8 by 3 comma 0, B to be 2 comma 1 by 2 or 2 comma 0 0.5 and similarly, C is 0 comma 11 by 2 or 0 comma 5.5. If I find the value of the objective function at these three points, you observe that we have 160 value of the objective function at both A and B. Now, that is something interesting. At the same time, this is an unbounded region and if you had followed our previous series, you would have realized that in the corner point method, we had some instructions about the feasible region being unbounded. The conditions had very clearly said that if m is the minimum value of the objective function and there is an open half plane decided by the objective function that is ax plus by lesser than m and this half plane has no point in common with the feasible region, then only that small m is the minimum value. That means, I must find the half plane which is representing 60x plus 80y less than 160, the minimum value that we are able to see at the corner points, in this case at two corner points. As you draw, as you shade the region representing 60x plus 80y less than 160, one can easily see that this half plane has no point in common with our feasible region. And therefore, the theorem very, very nicely tells us that 160 must be the minimum value. Now, in this case, we have two points, both A and B are giving me the cost as 160. In such situations, therefore, the conclusion would be simply every point that lies on the join of A and B will be our optimal solution, simply because any point that lies on the segment including the points A and B, they will be such that the objective function 60x plus 80y always takes the value 160. So, any point between A and B and including A and B will be the values, they will be the points at which we have the objective function taking the optimal value. And what will be the minimum cost? It is 160 rupees only. So, this is a special case where we found that the corner points, not a single one, but two of them are giving rise to optimal solution. And in that case, you will state and conclude that every point joining those two given points as in this case AB. So, every point that lies on the line segment joining A and B will be our optimal solution. So, x is equal to 8 by 3 comma 0, that will not be the solution. Every point between A and B including A and B will be our optimal solution. And that is something new, something different about this problem. We also have another problem for you today. So far, we have been taking problems and finding solutions. Is there ever a situation when solution does not exist? Possibly yes. So, here is one question for all of you to explore that possibility. So, here the problem states, determine graphically the minimum value of the objective function z equal to negative 50x plus 20y subject to the constraints. So, you have three constraints and of course, the non-negative restrictions. So, here the problem is already formulated for you. 
we have to only figure out the solution graphically. So, obviously, we will start first by plotting the graph and in this case starting with 2 x minus y greater than or equal to negative 5. Again, if you take origin as your testing point, you will realize that it does satisfy the inequality 2 x minus y greater than or equal to negative 5. And therefore, the half plane which contains origin is the solution for this inequality. On the same graph paper, we plot our second inequality that is 3 x plus y greater than or equal to 3. 3 x plus y greater than or equal to 3 is not satisfied by origin and therefore, your shading would be away from the origin, the half plane which does not contain origin. I am sure you are very, very proficient at this point to do this kind of a plotting. And of course, we have a third inequality as well. When you are doing this on graph paper, as you must have realized by now, we need not do this entire shading. We will only make a note, mental note of where the shading is going to be for each one of them and then consider x and y greater than or equal to 0 and decide our feasible region, which again in this case happens to be an unbounded region. What are the corner points of this unbounded region? We are looking at four corner points A, B, C and D. A has 0, 0,5 coordinates, B is 0, 0,3, C is 1,0, D is 6,0. Going back to our algorithmic way of testing, I need corner point method which requires that I find the value of the objective function which is negative 50 times x plus 20y at these corner points. So, if I take a to be 0, 0,5 z comes out to be 100 at b z is 60, at c z takes the value negative 50, at d z takes the value negative 300. I wanted to minimize z. So, it does look that negative 300 is the smallest value, but is this the optimal solution? Since it is an unbounded region, I have to do one more test and that test would require that I define and plot the half plane representing negative 50 x plus 20 y lesser than negative 300. So, why do not you take a minute and plot and see where the shading is going to be as against the previous problems that we have done of similar kind. You will find that in this case when I take the half plane representing negative 50 x plus 20 y the shading overlaps partly the feasible region. And therefore, that little note that we just talked about which said that this half plane must not have any common points with the feasible region. So, here of course, there are common points. And so, in this case, how do we conclude and what do we observe? Simply that the half plane negative 50 x plus 20 y less than negative 300 has common points with feasible region z equal to negative 50 x plus 20 y. Therefore, this objective function has no minimum value subject to the given constraints. So, as in this lesson you observed two possibilities. You can have infinitely many solutions. And the second example illustrated, you may not have any solution for the objective function under given constraints. Possibilities are many and we have covered all that are listed in your NCRT textbook and are in your curriculum. I am sure you will enjoy attempting some more problems and will also score at the end of the year when you see them in your exam. All the best and take care.